Well, I think we've talked about everything this season. What can happen? What could go wrong? I don't know if there's anything left. Well, there was. Unfortunately, it was a frustrating Saturday afternoon to you. I know you didn't want to talk too much on Saturday because you just wanted to make sure everything was steady and you were looking after things. Now, the yeah. opportunity to just say, what did you make of it all? Well, the, the reason I didn't speak to you sadly is because we come to the training ground and trained. So, apologies if you, th if you thought I was being uh, obnoxious or frustrated. I, you know, I'd have spoke to you, but we come here. And Portsmouth come here. Um, it, was, it was more to do with the fact that I need to be, I need to be here. Um, was it frustrating? Of course it was frustrating, but, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. He made a decision. He didn't want to delay it because of 1,500 Portsmouth fans, which I, I, I understand. The fact that there was, there'd be 4,000 crew fans seemed irrelevant to him, but, you know, um, <laughs> he made his decision. You know, I, I said to him, you, you should delay for half an hour. Half an hour's not going to make any difference, and you'll see that the pitch will be playable as soon as the rain stops. The radar saying two o'clock, but he didn't want to do that, so he made the decision, and, and it is what it is. There's nothing more to say, really. He made, he made the decision. We spoke with the chairman, he, Charles, and he had his say about it all. And, you know, he was fairly level-headed about how it was for the, for the, for the referee and, and everything. <laughs> Can there be anything learned there? Because it seems like there's quite a few games we can get in the late, late call-off for for the, for the fans. So it's always the fans that suffer. Well, the fans didn't need to suffer. I think. I think the, the thing that um, the, the thing for me is when when there's inclement weather, which there could be this Saturday, for example, um, and, and we, we're going to chop them. Well, maybe part not, not the referee's job, but maybe part of the safety group before the game, they look at when's the last train, when's the last, you know, when's the road shutting, you know, the, the, basically the route of the supporters that are coming. That then allows the game to be kicked off. We, you know, we kicked off at 24 a couple of years ago against Colchester, and it was a brilliant game. Played in brilliant conditions. You know, it wasn't standing, it wasn't a farce or anything. The game on Saturday wouldn't have been a farce. We all know that because we know our pitch. Now, the referee doesn't know that, so you have to accept that. But I'm pretty certain all the Portsmouth fans that have took, home, took getting home an hour later, having seen a game of football, rather than coming five hours here and five hours back and getting home two hours earlier. Um, now, if, if that means um, the game gets delayed by three quarters an hour an hour, but some fans miss their last train, well, that's a problem. Then I can understand, even if the pitch would be playable, you can call it off then. I get that, because you might have 500 fans on a cruise train station not knowing how to get home. I think that's got to be, I think everything's in the planning and the preparation. You know, when you get a, you know, Portsmouth are a huge club with, with uh, unbelievable support, unbelievable fans, travel up length and breadth of the country. You know, I think, I think, for me, I don't know if it happens, so I, I might be teaching people how to suck eggs if you like, but I think the referee can then get advised by safety people, the police even, um, you know, this is the last train, our crew, I'm pretty certain it wouldn't have been half past six, it might have been half past eight to get them back home. Well then, I'm not saying the game kicks off at six, but at the same time, because the thing that referees don't consider is, there's, I think Portsmouth have got one free week. So then, if they then get one more call off, they're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. There's a welfare issue to the players, all because a referee didn't give everything possible, but didn't also have all the picture. So I'm, I'm not trying to pin it on the referee, I'm, not, I'm just trying to suggest things. Well, if that means, and, and, and I would imagine the, the Football Sports Association have their say, would you rather see it kick off at four? For example, or, or postpone. Well, I'm, or, you know, night games are a bit different, a lot different. But certainly Saturday afternoons, I don't, I, you know, Sunday afternoons they kick off at four, half five even Saturday afternoons. Is there is the, is the that much of a rush to call it off and get it home? As long as it's communicated to fans outside the ground and, and th th that's part of the safety briefing and procedures. Um, I think I think there's a, you know as long as that's made clear to everyone that, that before the game, this is what's going to happen. You know this is because of inclement weather. We, we've got this policy or procedure to to put in place where there'll be a pitch inspection at half one, so you can come in the ground at quarter to two or whatever it is, two o'clock if it's still not decided, half past two. So I understand you might be 
in a pub or outside getting wet even. If the Football Sports Association comes back and says our, our members don't want to do that, then fair enough. We call the game off as a, you know, a quarter to two like the ref did. But then that's inconveniences everyone, I think, more, more, more so. Um, I think that's, that, that's, that would be my suggestion, is to stop you know, situations like Saturday, which, which was unfortunate. I, I, the referee had a decision to make and he made it, rather than delaying. Um, yeah, you know, I don't think there's much more to say than that. So you get on with your work then, and you've got Oxford coming up. We've had a, a, a terrific day on Saturday, of course. They, they're a side that uh, are plenty of goals with. Yeah, yeah, the top scorers in the league, most shots in the league. Um, that's them. You know, they're, they're up right up there. They're always a tough nut to crack. You know, we, we found that out last year at our place. But we also know they're, they're not infallible because we're beating them at their place. So. We know it's going to be, a, you know, a, a tough, tough game. Um, you know, it's close early on in the season, and we've got to make sure it's, you know, we come out on the right side of the line. It's a home game um, against a good team, and and we've got, you know, we've got to make sure we turn up. They've been one of the most consistent teams in League One, but they've not just been able to get over that white line, have they, and get themselves in, into the Championship. Uh, would you be expecting, because the way that they are, with obviously goals tell you they're attacking, is it an open game? Is it something as well that you've got to be open a bit more because you've got to get get wins? Yeah, look, we've got to score goals, so we've got to um, make sure we do our end of the bargain. If we don't score, we're not going to win games. Um, we've got to make sure that we're not um, vulnerable, stupidly. Um, but we know that we've got to We've got to uh, score some goals, so that's that's been the part of the focus, um, and hopefully that'll that'll come to fruition. Well, the weekend's games were wiped off for 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 some of your opponents down there at the bottom, so they've played. Not much has changed. It's still that nine-point gap. It's still doable, isn't it? If you can yeah. beat one of those teams that can get on that run, and that it's really time's running out. But games are still there. Yeah, look, we've we've got to we've got to get on that run. We've got to get on it quick. Um, we know that, um, but it's still in our hands. And while it's in our hands, you know, we've we've got the hope of of turning our season around. And of course, you've had your new boys bedding in. Are you satisfied with the way that the, the grads are getting up to what you, you're looking for? Your speed and the way that you're, uh, you're, you play? Yeah, I think it, it always takes time. You know, it took us two and a half years with, <laughs> with the, the group that's just left us. It's, it's, you can't wave a magic wand and do it overnight. Um, you know, so, so we're getting there with them, of course, we are. And every day they improve. Um, and we've got to make sure they improve at the fastest rate possible. And, and the lads here, um, who, who have been here, show them the ropes, but also step up to the plate themselves. Have you seen them bedding in OK? Because obviously you would have checked them out before you actually signed them, but have you, yeah. you found out that they're, they're, they're good to, get to the group? Yeah, yeah, they are good, all of them. We haven't, we haven't got an idiot. Um, you know, we, 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 we recruit heavily on character. So we've got to make sure that those characters turn up when it's most important. What about the injury list? Because it's fairly long, but you've had some, what I mean in terms of fairly long, it's one of two long termers. Where, where are you? Scott Caskett, Ben Knight, people like that, Rio Adebisi, those have been the, the long term ones. We know about Billy Sass Davis, but you've got Zach Williams back in the frame now. So where, can you give us a bit of an update of, is it going to be okay to get games for them before, before long? Scott's had his boot off. Um, Rio's at St George's um, for the next two weeks, so that's looking promising. He's back at the consultant on Wednesday. Hopefully, he'll give him the all clear. Um, ben Knight is going on grass next week, um, so I'm hopeful that you know, come the end of the month, well, start of next month. That we might have one or two of them back. Just an update on Zach Williams because that's been a, a concern for everybody. But I think he's back in the building, is he? Yeah, he's back in the building. He's back in the building. He's lost. He, there wasn't much on him before. But he's lost a considerable amount of weight. So he's. Um, we, 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 and, and we've got to be mindful of the fact that he's. He's still only 17. So we've got to. Um, be really careful with him. 
you know, the, the kids, it's still a child, do, do spring back quicker than, than probably 32 year old adults. However, at the same time, they're also more vulnerable to other things going wrong or a relapse. So we've got to, he's, he's chomping at the bit, he's getting stronger every day, as you can imagine, he's eat, eating like a horse, his, his mum tells us, and he's, we've certainly seen that here. Um, you know, so, he's, so he is getting stronger every day and we've got to make sure that you know, when's the time right, he'll be back involved.